When it comes to buying a one wheel in 2022, as consumers we have more options than ever. But which board is right for you? Today we'll try to give you our most honest and unbiased opinions on why the Pint, the Pinax, and the One Wheel GT could be the start or next addition to your quiver. Let's go. In 2021, Future Motion, the maker of the One Wheel, unveiled two new boards, the Pinex, ready to ship on release, and to our surprise, the GT, dethroning their previous flagship, the One Wheel XR. Keeping with their theme to modernize their products, Future Motion kept the original Pint in this roster of complete and finished, making all of their offerings feel very reminiscent of how Apple markets their devices. Smooth, sleek, and with the details in mind. But now with the new and old options alike, what board do you buy? Released in 2019, now the oldest of the bunch in Future Motion's current lineup, the Pint brought features to the table such as the light bar and simple stop. The original Pint felt like the first one wheel that didn't provoke the question, did you build that? A question that previous model owners have been asked for years. With an advertised six to eight miles of range, 60 mile an hour top speed and the same tried and true 750 watt hypercore motor used in every board since the Plus and a total package weight of 23 pounds, the Pint made getting into the sport more affordable than ever, but at what trade-offs? To start, the advertised top speed for most riders doesn't really seem to match up with most real world users reporting pushback at around 14-ish miles an hour. Pushback is a safety feature that uses the nose of the board to tell you that you're getting too close to the board's torque and speed limitations. This is usually fine for most people though, especially new riders considering that your run-of-the-mill rentable electric scooter tends to be about the same top speed and is usually about as fast as most people are comfortable going. Fitted with the smallest foot pad Future Motion has made, measuring eight and a quarter by seven, and a total deck length of 27 inches, this is usually the part where anyone over a certain height or weight threshold starts to lose interest, but this doesn't mean that it's not a sweet little product regardless. The Pine is a great fit for kids, new riders, and veterans alike. Future Motion made it apparent in things like the tuning and tire size that Pine is one of the easiest and most well-rounded experiences they could make for the price. There is a few flaws though, as there usually are with any product, like a sensor that's frankly hit or miss, poor range when compared to other models, and a headlight that might as well be sold as a crappy phone camera flash. But none of these besides the foot pad, which is replaceable and covered under warranty, really put a halt to the actual experience that a one wheel can give you. Being the cheapest option to entry at 1,050 USD, Future Motion's first real finished product is a sweet little machine. Simple stop, the indicator light, high torque from its 10 and a half inch tire, decent nose clearance for most situations, and a sizable handful of aftermarket accessories, the Pint starts to look like a viable option depending on your use case and needs. Watch to the end of the video to see what board we recommend for different situations and riders. The Pint X seems like an answer to the community's gripes with the original Pint, adding a higher top speed and more range. Unfortunately, his choices lean a little more towards symmetry instead of being thoughtful to the design by limiting the clearance in the nose and tail to accommodate for the larger battery pack in the rear and lack of any real change to anything in the front. If you want to see our full teardown of the X, we'll have that linked in the description. Looking past the new design choices reveals everything about the original pint that made it a fit and polished product and more. Well, mostly just range and speed. But in my opinion, it would have been great to see the original Pint hit the same top speed from the start, considering almost all of the components are the same besides the battery and firmware. The upgraded battery makes the X a legitimately viable option for people that use their boards as vehicles to commute, the more avid rider who just wants less range anxiety on solo missions, or you just want to be able to keep up for the entirety of your local group ride. Since we're on the topic of the battery, the Pint X ships with the same charger that the original Pint came with, despite being twice the size of the original battery pack. This makes charging painfully slow unless you decide to pick up Future Motion's hypercharger for Pint, sending you back a spicy $110 USD plus tax. This obviously isn't a deal breaker for most people, it just would have been nice to see an upgraded charger come in the box with a new base price of $1,400 USD. Unfortunately with the X being, well, still a Pint, this means that it still hasn't gotten much in the realm of drastic mods or third party support despite its growing popularity. But now that the XR is no longer sold by Future Motion, it maybe will see a resurgence of interest in aftermarket parts for the X in the near future. To wrap up, I know I really ripped into it, but it's a great little board with what seems like Future Motion's attempt to rectify some of the gripes that the community had with his predecessor, which we highly praise. It's legitimately one of the best feelings to be able to keep up with your friends on their boards, confidently crush a run to the store, or rip some trails through the woods knowing that you've got the range and torque to boot in such a tight package. If I had to recommend a board to someone right now, the X would probably be on the top of the list as far as what you can buy new from One Wheel's website. Well, we're at the part of the video 90% of you are probably watching for, the One Wheel GT. I'm sure most of the world was just as surprised as we were about the release and promises of the GT, Future Motion's new flagship. 
To make sure this video ages as well as it can, I'll only be speaking about the pure facts that we've come to find and already know about this option, excluding any bugs the board might have had at launch. Being the first board to sell for more than $2,000 USD, the price tag isn't the only thing hefty about this board. Weighing in at 35 pounds, the GT is almost 10 pounds heavier than the XR, making it a beast. The extra weight, however, can almost be completely justified by the new battery pack. Utilizing the power of 21700 lithium iron batteries, nickel manganese cobalt for all the battery nerds out there, at an upgraded 72 volts from the previous 64 with the 18650s on the Pinton XR, this increases the range and torque in almost every scenario. Unfortunately, this also means slow charging out of the box without the optional hypercharger, but at least you'll be charging less compared to a stock XR or Pintex. The GT is also the first model to use a new tire size, which means in order to get a new tire currently, you'll be sending your board back to Santa Cruz, California to have Future Motion mounted for you. It sounds like in the future, Future Motion will be offering tires on their website, but at the current time of recording, there's no such product listing. We don't currently have any data yet on how many miles these new tires can take, but you should see at least 800 to 1,000 miles confidently out of one, so don't sweat it for now. 20 mile an hour top speed, 20 to 32 mile range, and $2,200 without any accessories. Boasting new concave foot pads, a new style of charge port, and the move away from the more traditionally squared off rails design that we've known for so long, the GT has definitely had some engineering put into it. But let's not forget what holds the GT back. With currently only stock foot pad options being concave, we've noticed with ours at least that after extended riding or tricks, the edges of the pads tend to wear into our foot, causing discomfort over time and making drops sharp and unforgiving. Your mileage may vary though, and may not even bother you depending on stance and other factors. The GT definitely feels heavier than the XR ever did, but seems to carry itself and the rider's weight in a more confident manner especially for new users, almost completely eliminating the worry of nose diving. Nose diving is bad, probably stay away from that. The new top speed before pushback is happily welcomed, especially with the extra torque. On April 22nd, 2022, the GT received its first firmware push, changing the board's preset tunes for increased performance and adding the pushback beep, a new addition to the board's safety features. Now with physical pushback and the audible tone, which is able to be turned off in the app, it makes the GT the safest and most confident instilling board that we've had the pleasure of riding. In our opinion, comparing the GT to their previous flagship, the XR, the board does feel a little more top heavy in comparison and coupled with either of the stock tire options, this makes for a somewhat wobbly and occasionally sketchy experience of speed. Again though, each rider is different and you may love the feeling of the stock ride. Most owners of the GT report absolutely loving it, whether it's crushing trails, climbing new hills they couldn't before, and generally feeling more confident in their riding abilities thanks to the added safety. So, which board do you buy? Whether you're a college student, have a mellow commute to work, or want something to stick your kids on that'll be more manageable and a little more maneuverable than some of the larger options, the Pine is honestly probably going to be the perfect pick. By no means is any one wheel light, but the OG Pint definitely takes the trophy for being the lightest and most nimble, making tight space riding and hauls up a few flights of stairs more manageable to your muscles. Costing just over $1,000, this makes the Pint one of the cheapest options for a high quality, well-built, and probably one of the most fun entry-level PEVs in this price range. The Pint has always been a great option for those who are curious about the hobby, aren't speed demons, need the extra board for themselves, or just want another so they can get their friends to tag along. The Pint X adds on to the bite-sized stoke the original Pint created, with a faster top speed, twice the range on average, all while generally keeping the same form factor. If you see yourself as having a more progressed palette for board sports, need the extra range for commuting, have any need to go faster than 50 miles an hour without gritting your teeth through pushback, and still want something that'll continue to be just as nimble and zippy as the day you bought it, buy a Pinex. The GT is something that will almost undeniably be a damn good choice for almost any rider, especially if Future Motion follows suit like they did with the continued firmware updates for XR. With tons of torque, enough range for at least a solid hour easily of continued runtime, and flagship focus for a few years to come, the GT stacks up to be a super solid product. Though pricey and heavy, it's hard to put a dollar amount on fun, but this much fun will cost you twice as much as the pint. I recommend this board to anyone who wants to have the most range, the most power and peace of mind to go fast and stay upright, shredders and commuters alike, and really anyone who wants the best of what self-balancing tech at this scale has to offer. Future Motion has put obvious thought into the design and tech packed into the GT, and we're stoked to see what it's capable of doing in the future. Unfortunately, with the discontinuation of the XR, it made writing this video a lot harder. If you're looking for the most well-rounded, best bang for your buck, and easiest board to customize and kit out to the nines, the XR is still your best option, if and only if you can find a dealer that has new on-shelf boards or you buy used. Someday we'll no longer have access to the parts to keep these boards going, and we'll have to switch to something newer from Future Motion. Or, if tuning and third-party accessories flourish like I expect them to, we'll have open-source community-driven options as well. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and uh, subscribe or become a member if that's something you're into. You can find our website down in the description below if you're lo looking for any accessories to get your board out once you buy it. Consider buying ours first because uh, maybe this video helped you and you, you just want to support us. Float out, my friends. And there you have it, folks. There is no wrong decision here. A one wheel is gonna upgrade your life nonetheless. My choice, XR and GT, because I like going fast and going big. If you get a new board, consider upgrading it and accessorizing it with some Float Life products. And hey, I hope you float on, my friend, and have a wonderful day. See ya.